So this one is going to go into a little bit more advanced territory to use different versions of Python in different kinds of virtual environments. So if you want to learn about that, awesome. Otherwise, you are pretty much done with this project, right? So we created a Django project and we installed the Python version we needed, activated a virtual environment and all that. So you're actually ready to go through one of our actual projects. So on cfe.sh slash projects, check out Try Django 2.2 or whatever new version of Try Django is out. That is a really free and easy way to get started with Django. We go into a lot of depth there. There is probably some overlap to this setup process, um, but overall it's the introduction into building a real Django project beyond just setting up your environment like what we did here. Um, and we also have a lot of stuff like that on cfe.sh slash YouTube. This is our YouTube channel. So definitely check that out as well. Now for the rest of us, what we're gonna be doing here is creating new virtual environments and using different versions of Python. Every once in a while, you might have a completely old project that you need to upgrade. So you need to actually use the old versions of software to get it even working. Right, so like if I sent you a Django project that was Django 1.11, that project will still run and probably still run really well. But you might need to use Python 3.6 and you also definitely gonna need to install Django 1.11 and all of those things. So I wanna show you how to actually do that because it's not that hard to do, but it is something that I think is very useful to know and to know early on if you intend on going that route. Because I also myself have a lot of these legacy projects on our GitHub, and that is at cfe.sh slash GitHub. We have a lot of legacy projects on there that you can absolutely still learn from. So definitely consider checking that out too. So let's go ahead and open up our terminal window here. And I'm gonna CD into my desktop. And I'm gonna make a new directory here, and I'm gonna just call this ENVs and CD into ENVs. Now, the only reason I'm calling it ENVs is to just show you what it is that I need to do. Now, first I wanna start with virtual ENV. This one is a command that is something I used in the past and I used it a lot. So you might see it peppered throughout all of my different projects. So if I go ahead and go make dir test one and CD into test one, I wanna create a virtual environment project with Python and I wanna use version 3.6. Now, I already have version 3.6 on my computer, so instead of me just typing out Python version 3.6, I actually want to grab the executable itself. So if I go into Python 3.6, I'm gonna import sys and then print out sys.executable. This is the location as to where I can execute Python 3.6. In other words, if I exit out of Python and hit that, it will actually bring me into Python. This is, you know, Python 3.6, this command right here is just a shortcut to calling this right here. So that means then I can do virtual env dash p, whatever that executable is, and then period, and now it will actually create that virtual environment from there, right? And I can see that with source bin slash activate and then Python V, and that shows me that Python version. Um, don't worry about some of these failures or some of the permission errors that my system is seeing. This is the point is that now I can change whatever virtual environment that I want. So I'll go ahead and close that one out and open up a new one, okay? So we'll go ahead and CD into, oops, let's CD into our desktop here. And then we will CD into ENVs and then I'll do a make dir test two, okay? So inside of test two, I want to get Python 3.7 now, and I'll do dash V. It's 3.7.6, right? So if I go to python.org to the downloads, I wanna see what the latest version of Python 3.7 is. So clicking on the different versions here, I've got 3.7.7. .7. So this is a newer version than what I have on my local system. So I'm gonna go ahead and download this, open this up, hit continue, 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 agree, install. 
Okay, and I could have changed where it actually installed it. The defaults are all pretty much fine when it comes to installing Python on Mac OS, or at least that's my opinion. Windows, I changed it a little bit. Uh, but now that that's gonna be installed, I wanna just go ahead and open up a new window to make sure that that is the version of Python. So I'll let this finish. Okay, there it is, 3.7.7, 3.7.6. Let's open up a new terminal window here and Python 3.7-v, 3.7.7, Python 3-v, 3.7.7. Uh-oh, I just changed the default Python 3 on accident. But that's okay because if I do Python 3.8, it shows me the correct version of Python 3.8. So this happens as well. You're like, hey, I need to install Python 3.6 on my computer, but 3.8 is the one that I have it changes it, right? It did change what the default one is. I'm not gonna get into actually changing it back to whatever the default is. The quickest way is to just reinstall 3.8.2. That I think will change the paths and all that for you as well. Um, but overall, the idea here is now I have a newer version of 3.7 and 3.8. So if I needed to create a pip env file now with that, well, how could I do it? First and foremost, I'll go into Python 3.7. I'm gonna import sys print sys.executable and there it is. Exit out of this and now pip env install and dash dash python and then that executable location, you hit enter and this will actually create that for you. So if I cd back and I do make dir test three, I can cd into test three. Another way to do that is just doing pip env install dash dash python and then the number. So in my case 3.7, that would actually give me the actual version of 3.7 that is on my local system. Pip env maybe in the future will download it and install that for you. Right now it does not. You actually have to have it on your local system in order for it to work. Uh, hopefully that wasn't that is clear. If it wasn't clear, hopefully it's clear now. So that's how you can actually use different versions of Python. So I did say that, hey, what if we downloaded and installed this? Let's go ahead and just give that a shot. Let's see if, if I install Python 3.2 again, if it will actually change my Python default path uh, because every once in a while you might need that to happen. Okay, Python 3.8 has been installed. I'm gonna move it to the trash, I don't need it anymore. Let's open up another terminal window and type out Python 3, still 3.7.7. Okay, so to solve this problem, we need to create an alias in our Z shell profile. So uh, let's go ahead and open up a new terminal window here. And if you are not familiar with Z shell, if you go ahead and do cat.zshrc, you'll see maybe something like this or you'll see nothing. So what I just need to do is actually update this because I'm using the Z shell. If you don't see Z shell here, but you see bash, then you would be doing bash profile or bash RC. One of those two things would be how you would actually do the exact same thing we're about to do. And that is creating the alias for Python 3. So I'll go ahead and do sudo nano tilde slash dot z s h r c this is saying super user do nano as in edit we're going to edit this inside of our terminal here tilde slash that's the root of the user and then the file name itself is the d uh, dot z s h r c so if you, z s h that's the z shell r c uh, which would be the like sort of user's profile for this terminal window. You type in your super user's password as in the same password you use to install things. And then you can add in an alias here. In my case, I'm making the alias Python 3 and I'm gonna set it equal to the Python 3 path that I want. So let's go ahead and open up a new terminal window before I close out the nano. And I'm just gonna go ahead and say which Python 3.8, which Python 3.8 gives me the location of the executable as well. 
Um, this is just a shortcut to it, but oftentimes it doesn't give you the exact value. In this case, this is fine because this is a uh, this this might be an alias anyway. So this actually works. So I can paste that in in there. You know, worst case scenario, if what I'm about to do doesn't work, you could just go into whichever version of Python, import sys, and print out sys.executable and do the alias to that, which in this case, it's the exact same thing. Uh, but now that I've got that alias in here, I can save it with control X to start to close it, and then Y to save the changes, enter to override the original file, and then I can just open up a new one and say Python 3 dash V, I get that version of Python. So that alias is really nice for shortcutting things. So if you actually wanted to do something like Pi 3, you could create an alias for that with, with what we just did. And uh, we have courses on how to actually work with um, a lot more things in the terminal on here using the bash shell, but bash and Z shell aren't really different in terms of setup process for stuff like that. Um, so that's pretty cool. Now we have different versions of Python and we have a way to change those versions, install new ones, change the alias to it, a lot more depth on, on what we might need to do with our various virtual environments. Um, so I think that's pretty cool. Hopefully you got something out of this. Let's keep going.